Chief Officer Linus Asukwa, Director General and CEO of National Metallurgical Development Center. He was speaking on the vision of ATAR on science and tech. We're going to have a discussion segment right about now, but could you please put your hands together for that delivery? Thank you very much. All right, Mr. Chairman will handle the discussion segment. Thank you. Uh, thank you, MC. Thank you very much, Engineer Professor Lanius Okonosukwa, for a very brilliant paper. Uh, you did justice to that topic. We hope that um, we will not suffer or continue to suffer from technophobia, that um, all of us would be um, technophilic, you know, having deep seated technophilia in us. Secondly, I would not want to elaborate too much or summarize Professor Lanius was paper. Or I'll call on a panel of three discussants to do justice by way of either elaboration or some additions to the paper presented by Professor Lanus Okono I have a singular honor and privilege then to invite to this chair one of our discussants, very erudite professor, former vice chancellor, former West African Central Bank, a lot of things that this guru has upstairs. Professor Akpan Hogan Ekpo. Prof, please. Please round of applause for him, please. Encourage him, encourage him as he's coming up. Then, to save time, I also have the privilege to invite up here Professor Okon Ansa. Professor Okon Ansa. And lastly, but not the least, is Professor Bebe Upong. Please. Come to the high table, please. Lecture was very, very exciting, very illuminating. And the professor, Lana Sukwa, was uh, uh, the driver of the vision of Governor Ta in terms of science and tech, technology. Uh, I was not in the ESCO of Governor Ta. I was only part-time chairman of the investment council, an, an, unpaid, an unpaid economic advisor to <laughs> Governor Victor Robo. Atta. But I will not deny that I was very, very, very close to Governor Victor Atta, and I want to thank him for giving me the opportunity to uh, put in practice some of my ideas. But let me say something before I add some few remarks on the paper. The governor we are seeing here, uh, if you are very close and work with him, is highly intelligent, visionary. If you're not prepared, don't go to him. Uh, uh, there are times I will, I will go to him you will raise some issues, I will just in my mind say, it's better I say, Excellency, I will come back. <laughs> so I will go and get prepared. There's a day he has forgotten, I told him, Excellency, but I'm not an architect. He said, you should be an architect. I said, but I'm not. So, uh, visionary leader, all what has been said, they're all true. Paper has delved into some of the good ideas. I will tell you one or two things. I was involved, I was a member of the senior technical committee that the last government of President Buhari approved a development plan. And it came to a section, they said, the federal government wants to establish a science and tech park. And I said, my state had the idea years back. It was amazing. They couldn't believe it. See, what happened? I said, well, it's a story for another day. We could have been in Silicon Valley of Maybe not just Nigeria, but the, uh, but the sub-region. Now, uh, there is, I, I, I think the, the lecturer made mention of the fact that some of from Akwaibo we are sent to Canada for training to come back and work in the science and tech park. They all graduated and almost 90% are 
are now Canadian uh, citizens. So we lost out. Okay? You mentioned the issue of architect. I'm talking in terms of consistency in policy and continuity in governance. Correct. I was the pioneer vice chancellor of architect and reluctantly I accepted that position because I had options. But I was amazed when the new government came and they came to probe Akipok, sorry, architect. And they asked me, why did, you, why, did you, why did your team send people abroad to study? Start development. They said, why? It wasn't necessary. Then there were propaganda in the APAS. They didn't send anybody. They just took the dollars and put it in their pockets. Today, that's the evidence. It was the visionary of Victor Atta. And the people that interviewed them were solid scholars. Someone like Professor Ifume Kuhn, mathematical engineer, was involved in the panel that interviewed these young men and sent them to Singapore, to Michigan, and so on and so forth. Another point I want to raise in terms of science and tech is that Victor Atta had a vision, and we went to Singapore. Singapore. Singapore was willing to come to acquire and transform the entire Ibn coast. Because they were going to sponsor marine engineering and marine uh, architecture. And we sent people to the University of Michigan to study that. All of that uh, because of lack of continuity and lack of not having a visionary leader. As was said, Ondo State took the idea and, uh, and, uh, and went, went, went to town with it. And they are, doing, they are doing very well. So the issue of capacity building is very important. The issue of having a leader that is visionary and transformative because a leader is someone that gives you, is a, a leader is a dealer in hope, must give you hope. And Victor Atta gave the state and Nigeria hope. Another important issue, sir, that is also linked to this. If you go outside of this state, maybe Lagos and the rest of this, you see our people doing very menial jobs. We are house boys and house girls. If, if you have a good friend, he will tell you, oh, can you find me a house boy from your state? Go to Victor Atta took Akwaibo back into Nigeria and said there was no going back. That the house boy, house girl syndrome must stop. That is very, very important. And part of all that has been listed by the guest lecturer was to ensure that going forward, we're no longer house boys and house girls. And I will employ new leaders of the state to learn from what he has done. So that, so that, the so-called, we're well not so-called, the renewed hope that we are talking about does not become a renewed misery or an uncommon misery. Our state must be developed. And to develop the state, we need visionary leaders. Thank you very much, Prof. Like Obong, Victor, Atta. Victor Atta. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you. Pro Dr. Bebe, welcome, please. Two minutes. Thank you, Chairman, and Your Excellency. Uh, respect again. Um, I need to raise the issue that we have to keep conversation around and after this meeting. And the issue is, why do we truncate our future because we do not understand how it's been programmed to work out. That's the central argument in the Professor Linus Asukwa's presentation uh, within science and technology perspective of um, a development plan in the, uh, under Obong Victor Atta. It was a privilege working um, in the cabinet, uh, it was also a honor for me to be part of um, the vision, even though I was not commissioner for science and tech. But that was the nature of the government that we had. Uh, Mr. Chairman, practically, sending our students to Canada under PPL, I had the privilege of uh, managing that program. And if you can recall, um, we had so much of criticism of people in America in particular. 
uh, I remember appearing before the House of Assembly more than twice with uh, Professor Lionel Sasuko, and it was the issue you raised. Why would the governor send some people, some of our children to Canada? And had only one explanation, and that's the explanation I want to put back here. If we do not interact with the larger world, how do we know the world has not left us behind? In the vision, the idea was, let's send some of our brightest minds and let them be able to buy or if you want to use the word, let, let them be able to uh, find the back, back door to get new perspectives that we do not have here. The program in Canada had the component we call co-op education, C-O-O-P, which was a technical, uh, the, the te the technical um, a component that all the graduates would have to have industry uh, experience. Remember, sir? For most of our programs, when we go to the university, we get back, we have the book knowledge. We didn't have to have the practical knowledge because the two worlds were separated. All those who went to Canada in their first year were bought into corp education, directly into the industry. And as soon as they finished, they were all taken up. They were all taken up. They didn't have... Uh, citizenship yet, but none of the first batch that we sent were 70, stu 70 students that went. In their first two weeks of graduation, we hired. And the government followed them. Within the first one year, after they left the university, they became citizens. All of the equipment pool went. And they had the opportunity of acquiring deep knowledge that we couldn't have yet, and the way to come back. That's why they built the facilities. Who stopped those facilities? Who counseled the opportunities that we were supposed to have built? South Africa knew what Nigeria was doing. The last batch we went to see the student, I was about to leave when I got a call. Could you come to South Africa to explain why the model had worked for a state. I didn't know how they got to know that. But I remember that I had to call His Excellency, who gave me permission. If that's what the world needs to know, let's go ahead and explain to the world. And we went. South Africa, ahead of Nigeria as it were, and which you probably would know, built on that same model. Let's link the present to the future beyond the boundaries of the geographical expression. Why has that not worked? Who bewitched us? And how do we bring those people back? The intention was not really to bring them back physically. The intention was to bring the knowledge that they possess and that we could create a larger state. In Nigeria, before we left, we took Aquaibom into Nigeria. And the governor took Aquaibom into the world through these programs. And those are excellent ambassadors that you can check any time. We need to do more of that. It has worked. Thank you very much, Professor Bebopong. Professor Okonansa, please, briefly, two minutes. Okay. Thank you, uh, Okay, just two minutes. Um, Professor Linus uh, talked about why we needed the science and, and technology park and why science technology is important. Science and technology is designed to drive an economy to new heights, and it's supposed to be a hub for innovation. Let me tell you two hubs for innovation that Aquaibom put in place when this man was governor. I was the leader of the team that built Ibom Power. And I know what it took to build that facility. And when we, Aquaibom didn't have the kind of money it has today. We're borrowing money from UBA, borrowing money, we're talking to Afro Exim Bank, we're talking to all kinds of banks trying to ensure we could bring in the turbines from China, um, from GE. S sir, of all the power plans that were started both by the federal government and the state governments, 
Ebon Power was the only power plant that was commissioned in 2007. <laughs> Almost all the others, including the Calabar plant, the, the plant you see on the way to Calabar, they were all started around the same time. Equipment were bought from the same people, from GE and from China. Most of them never got commissioned, and some have still not been commissioned till tomorrow. Ebon Power was commissioned, and Victor Atta had told us, said, we cannot build the state until we have power. For him, it was 24-hour power. And he would call me in the middle of the night. He said, what is happening with our power plant? You couldn't sleep. The man would call you over and over again. What's happening with our power plant? And until that power plant was commissioned, the day was commissioned. That's the day I had serious sleep at, <laughs> that night. The other one that I need to bring to attention, talking about taking an economy to new heights. I remember one morning, that time we used to go to Calabar to board the flight. And we'd leave Uyo about 5 a.m. to catch the flight at 7.30 in Calabar. And the race to catch the flight was not a small race. One, one morning, I were together, and, and the governor looked. He was, he was just walking along as we walked along with him. He said, do you know if we had our own airport, this Calabar airport would shut down. I said, why, Your Excellency? He said, almost all the passengers in this airport are from Akwaibom State or from Abia or Imo. If we have our airport, our people will fly from our airport. Imo and Abia would fly from us because it's easier to go to you and fly out. Believe it or not, since Imo Airport was built, Calabar Airport just knows died. It was clear the man understood where we were going. He understood what needed to be done. He understood how to... People fly, come from Calabar to board flights in Uyo today. So he understood. He saw the future. And the science park was the other leg of the future that was not allowed to come on stream. The fourth leg was that, what we call five-star hotel, that has become the center of all activities in Nigeria today. Everybody comes here for retreat. Federal government, everybody. Federal executive council, everybody comes here now for retreat. I think some federal people have just left this place just the last one or two days. So he saw the future. He knew how to drive an economy to new heights. The one leg that was not allowed to stand, and which if it had stood, we would have been reaping the benefits today, was the science part. Oh, the fourth leg that wasn't allowed to stand. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you so, so much. Well yeah. Please, once again, a round of applause for the three professors <laughs> Professor Kwaneko, Professor Bebe Upong, and Professor Konesa. Please, Prof, resume your seats. Thank you so much. Thank you. <clears throat> Please, ladies and gentlemen, um, in Professor Lanius Osukwa's lecture, there is one thing that we must note, and that is continuity. Continuity, continuity. Number two, I remember that in the just recently held Ibom Dialogue of the new administration, participants were drawn from all the parties. And I was happy to see other parties, other political parties in that dialogue. And the essence was for them to build a pan policies around the issues of development. The third point I would like to make, Your Excellency, the celebrant, is about Science Park. Because I was involved, and I was in the last administration, and we tried to work for the new administration. So, and Obama that made me to go to so many places when he was governor. So I think, I, please, permit me to make some remarks about that. The Science Park was not continued by the administration that succeeded him. And I want to give you a typical example of what happens. If you are running a relay race, there are four segments. There are four segments. The first runner runs and hands over the banting to the next runner, the next segment. The second segment to the third, the third to the fourth. If any of the runners of the segment says, no, the one that ran before didn't run so well, let me go back to start from where he started. Will you succeed? You will not succeed. That is the power of continuity and full understanding of what is on ground. 
Lastly, a science park is the meeting point of smart brains, smart sweat equity, and state power that they can invest and develop their skills and competencies in the digital arena to become entrepreneurs. The Silicon Valley, Shinshinshu Science Park in Taiwan, Silicon Oasis in Dubai today, South African Innovation Hub, all were conceived along that same line, even Singapore too. The boys and girls who have brains, sweat equity, they don't have financial resources. Neither do they have state power. And they don't have the enabling environment or broadband internet, the workshop, the laboratories to do the thing they should do to migrate the ideas from laboratories and workshops to the market. So the science park provides all of those, all of those to smart boys and girls. And the science park also markets them. This was not understood. That the, the science park also markets them, enables them to incorporate their companies as they are growing towards completion. When they graduate, they move to their respective industrial sites, and the state government owns its percentage equity in those businesses, small percentage. Over time, a state government becomes stinkingly rich, apart from industrial revolution that takes place as a result of science park development. But the Lanyard Sutukwa made a point about the International Association of Science Park. Let me mention something that he, I won't say he glossed over, I think he was, uh, was the one honoring him. Aquabon State Government signed referees form, guarantorship for federal government to be a member of the International Association of Science Parks. That is the truth. We had to sign. You know, but you were there before, before them. So that is the essence of so what the Ford Industrial Revolution. Now we're talking about artificial intelligence, robotics, smart homes, robo cooking. Robo cooking is by software, the kitchen is automated, and you want to cook afang, and then the robots come out, pick afang, pick uh, uh, onions, pick pepper, pick mfi, pick uh, crayfish from the various pigeon holes. Before you arrive home, the soup is ready. But that will not be possible. So I want that to know that at least the current administration, from what I have gathered, Your Excellency, the current administration from the Ibom Dialogue, they are taking the science back deeply seriously. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.